Hey guys, I was having a recent conversation with a consulting client earlier, and while I was going over it with a colleague, it just became clear to us this would make a good video. So this person I was talking to had recently done some work with a business coach uh, who had given her an idea of things that she could try for content on the site that she was bouncing off of me. And the idea basically was write an article that's like the 10 best and then insert whatever your industry is that you're trying to rank better in. And then make the whole article basically calling out each of your major competitors in the area and being very praiseful of them and like in sections talking about what makes them great and going down the list. And they were talking about doing like a top 10 list. And that the idea of this was supposedly that they did it and then the site that they did that on started ranking a lot better for that type of search and isn't this a great solution. And I was sort of mixed on that as a strategy. First of all, principally, I love the idea of a person being open enough to praise their competition and give credit where it's due. So certainly, you know, if you feel like you really can do that, by all means, do it about some of your competition that you respect. Just don't do it emptily for no other reason than just some rankings. But from an SEO standpoint, maybe I could see why that would work, improving your rankings a little bit. But to be honest with you, uh, when I hear that, what it resonates to me is this sounds like the advice of a person who doesn't really understand what SEO is really trying to do. And the fact that it came from a business coach, I'm not trying to throw shade. It's just that's not their area of expertise. So it's understandable that they would have that kind of misunderstanding. Those kind of strategies are born only of thinking that SEO is really about vanity. It's about pointing at how well you rank for something and saying, aren't I great? And as I always tell people that I work with, the goal really is to create some kind of action on the website, whether that's calling you or something else. Obviously, if you're a business and that's not happening, it really doesn't matter where you rank for anything because that becomes irrelevant at that point. And so with an article like that, I would have to say, Suppose it does rank. Suppose that strategy somehow is amazing and it really improves your rankings for those types of searches. Now the person has clicked through and they're on your site. Now what? I don't think that article really does a great job of addressing that in any way that is useful because it seems to me, from a conversion standpoint, what you are counting on really heavily in that approach is that they're going to be so grateful that you are so magnanimous for providing them with this wonderful praise of these 10 other companies that they're going to somehow say while on your site, wow, I should definitely buy from you. And I just don't see that it's very likely that that's going to happen, first of all. Second of all, 10 seems overwhelming. If you were going to ever take that approach, I would say like top two or three, because think about the headspace of the person doing that search. If they want the 10 best, whatever it is, plumbers, graphic designers, whatever, they're already overwhelmed with the amount of options. The whole reason they're doing a search for the best one is they want something that's condensed. They want something simple. They don't want to have to look at a whole lot. And they're already looking at it like I asked Google the question and Google's top 10 organic results were already Google giving me a top 10 list. So for me to click through to an article that's a top 10 list is now a list of lists and it just seems redundant. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing necessarily that searcher is even interested in in the first place. That kind of redundancy doesn't make any sense. And if that searcher is like me on uh, that headspace where I would click to that article and the minute I saw it was this giant essay with 10 different sections in it, I'd be like, no, never mind. And I'd hit back. Well, that's a negative signal to Google now. You've actually damaged your site by putting content like that out there that could create a whole bunch of people quickly hitting back because that's a signal to Google the content is not good, it's not useful, it doesn't deserve to rank in the top 10, and then where have you really ended up? One last thought I would say about that too is I don't really like it a whole lot as a strategy other than everything else I've already said because to me it seems like the game that you're playing there is you're aping on their name. You're counting on, well, this competitor has a lot more name recognition and authority in the industry than me. So by me invoking their name repeatedly in my article, now I come up better because I'm riding the coattails of their brand, which, yeah, but 
if you're following somebody else's SEO, then you're always going to be second place to them. The only way to ever beat them is to do things they're not doing. And if you're basing your whole SEO strategy on riding their coattails, then they're always going to do it first and they're always going to do it better. And you're just hoping to like have some of that limelight rub off on you. And I just don't, as a professional, I don't really find that an alluring tactic that I would ever recommend to anybody that I know. Um, and so I hope that's helpful for you guys. Just an honest bit of feedback there. Um, if you've been told anything similar to that or you've been trying similar tactics and maybe it hasn't worked out like you thought, that's hopefully an explanation of why. Uh, and just to give you some things to think about when you're writing your SEO content, like I always say, always bear in mind the headspace of the person doing that search. Sometimes it'll be obvious just looking at the query. Sometimes it does take a little bit of thought and unpacking, but you can do yourself a lot of good uh, just thinking about your content through that lens. And a lot of times it'll become clear this content really either doesn't appeal to the type of person that's doing this search or the, per the type of person doing this search is not actually likely to take any kind of meaningful action on my site. And then is this content really part of my plan right now in the first place or should it be where my priority is right now? Um, put your questions down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.